Have you ever heard of someone who is a king and a priest? If you do not know, he was very famous in the world of his time. They heard about his fame and came to see him from different European countries. He is known by the name of Prester John in various studies and legends in Europe. Prester John was a legendary Christian patriarch, presbyter, and king. Stories popular in Europe in the 12th to the 17th centuries told of an Nestorian patriarch and king who was said to rule over a Christian nation lost amid the pagans and Muslims in the Orient. The accounts were often embellished with various tropes of medieval popular fantasy, depicting Prester John as a descendant of the three Magi. Ruling a kingdom full of riches, marvels, and strange creatures, at first, Prester John was imagined to reside in India. Tales of the Nestorian Christians' evangelistic success there and of Thomas the Apostle's subcontinental travels as documented in works like the Acts of Thomas probably provided the first seeds of the legend. After the coming of the Mongols to the Western world, accounts placed the king in Central Asia, and eventually Portuguese explorers came to believe that the term was a reference to Ethiopia, by which time it had been an isolated Christian exclave distant from any other Christian-ruled territory. But the true name of this great king is Saint King Yimrain Kerstos. Some believe that he is the Ethiopian king who inspired the myth of Prester John. Tedes Tumrit describes him as the king of Ethiopia closest to a priest, noting that he insisted on ruling Ethiopia according to apostolic canons. Stuart Monroe speculates that Abu Sali's description of the kings of Abyssinia as priests might have been based on information about this ruler that had reached Egypt. Yemrahana Krestos was the third king of the Zagwe dynasty, ruling during the second half of the 12th century. His biography is recorded in the Gedal Yemrahana Krestos, Saint Imrain Christ was born on May 19. Just like Abun Tekelheman and Abun Zina Marcos, when he was born, he turned to the east and thanked God. And his house was filled with light, surprising all the midwives. While he was still in his mother's womb, when his uncle Ten Thundam was reigning, he heard rumors that, the one who will reign after you is the son of your nephew named Yemarain Christos, and when he learned that, Yomarain Christos, was born. When he saw the blood, it was so beautiful that he blessed him saying, this is my son who will inherit my kingdom. When he sat with him for eight days and saw him playing among his children, Satan was in his heart and he was jealous and thought to kill him saying, is he going to become king and my children become his soldiers? However, the advisor said, he will not be of any use for the time being, and in the future, so that he does not know the secret of kingship, send him back to his mother and raise him there while herding cattle, but she raised him with wisdom and intelligence. The mother received the sent suitors and served them with food, but God revealed the king's trickery to her, so she hid her son. After she took him secretly and made him receive the deaconship from the bishop, she said, My son, your uncle wants to kill you, so you better stay away from him who will kill you in front of me, he who protected Jacob from Esau will also protect you. Imarain Christ also migrated to Gender. The story tells that the saint learned the physical and spiritual arts during his exile and later preached the gospel, healed the sick with miracles, and served God. As years passed by in this situation, God told him that his uncle, King Tantundum, had died and that he would reign on his throne. Under the guidance of the angel Saint Raphael, he came back to his country and made him sit in a place called Sai, today Shegla Maryam, in Lasta district, teaching the gospel and healing the sick. The local people who saw his teachings and miracles said, O oh man of God, you have freedom and love. We have given you a name of peaceful light, but tell us what your name is. And he said to them, My name is Yemarain Christ. At this, all the people whispered, When one named Yemarain Christ reigns, religion will be jealous and judgment will be corrected. 
When they ascertained that no one had reigned after the death of Tantundum, they begged in the name of God to tell them whose son he was. And he told them that he was the son of Jermaseum, the younger brother of Tantanudum and the elder brother of Jean-Seum. They said, The prophecy has been fulfilled, so let's make him king without delay, and put him on the throne. After Saint Imerain Christ took the scepter of the kingdom, he declared that everyone in his various activities should live according to the word of the gospel throughout his kingdom. God thought of building a house that would be praised, and he pitched a tent in a special place called Zazia until he found a place that was allowed for him, and he began to serve God like Moses. In this place, he lived in her tent for 22 years, blessing the people with a cross that came down from heaven and offering the heavenly bread and cup from God when he entered the Mass. After all these years, our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to him in glory and said to him, My friend, leave this place, Zazian, from now on in this place the heavenly bread and the heavenly cup will not come down to you, get up and go to the place that I will show you, and there the bread and the cup will be given to you until the day of your rest. Until the day when I come to spend this world, I will give you a wide cave where your life of holiness will be told, where your body will rest, where you will not need grass for the cover of the temple you will build, the work of my temple there, I will make my covenant with you forever. Imerain Christos got up with his people and went to the cave of Yugershin, which is now 42 kilometers away from the temples of St. Lalabella and under the Black Rocky Mountain. When he arrived, he found that the place was in the possession of the people, and he said, I am the king. He paid compensation and handed over the place to them. Yemrahana Crestos constructed a lavish stone church in the Aksumite style, ornamented with objects from Egypt. Located 12 miles northeast from Lalabella, the Yemrahana Crestos church was built in a large northeast-facing cave on the western side of Mount Abuna Yosef. Until the construction of a road in 2000, this church was reachable only after a long day's arduous journey on foot or mule. The part of the water is covered with wood and the soil is scattered and smoothed. Through this, the water below touches the distance of an arm's length. On top of it, he tied thinly cut stones with lime and built them in equal proportions. He decorated it with different shapes like the heavens. After he finished his work, he put the coffins of Saint Gabriel, Our Lady and Saint Kirk into it. He built his palace again in the same cave and he did not abuse the poor in his administration. Our King and our Holy Father will not exist, when the time of Christ's rest comes, God will keep his promise forever, he told him that he would comfort him and laid him to rest in honor on this blessed day of October 19th. He placed his grave in the same sacred cave that was mentioned earlier and the place is preserved in honor until today. They bless him on the holiday, may the help of the Holy Christ bless us with his prayers.